Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about two speculations in particular. I pulled up some history. It is quite interesting to look at your past orders. And this was the first time I started buying Philia. And you can see I also bought Bar's Charm for 95 cents, Blood Crypt for $6.50, and Steam Vents for $6.15. Uh, there was no shipping and it worked out fine. This was in 2013, so four years ago, pretty much, Falia was still a $2 card. You could get near mints at $2.25, but you could get the SPs, the LPs at below two. Now, at this point and continuing on, I just continued to buy them. Um, I continued to buy her as well as Malera. And it was something that I liked. I liked the card. I like how it looks. And I think it's overall, it's a strong card. Uh, it wasn't that great in standard. And that's what you have to understand about it. Was it saw more play in modern than standard when it was in standard. And that basically tells me I need to buy the card. Uh, next, you had Malera at near mint uh, $1.30. And then lightly played at $1.24. There was a time that you could buy just tons and tons of these and it was always a good time. It was always a good buy. And there's a particular card that I'm keeping an eye on. I need it to fall a bit more before I go ahead and start buying them up. And it should fall during rotation. So I'll give you that hint. You can leave me a comment below what card you think it could be. I'll give you, I'll give you another hint. It's not any of the Adrazi. It's kind of... I would consider it bulk right now, but it's bulk like as in a $1 card. I expect it to fall to 75 cents, maybe even 50 cents, and then quickly buy them up. And eventually it should be a $5 to $10 card in another four years. One of the crazy parts about the Malaria Falia is I knew they would be good. I knew they would be valuable. I knew buying the reprint, and obviously no one knows if a card's gonna be reprinted except for the big stores who get the list beforehand, I believe. So I don't have proof on that, but it seems like when Star City Games makes a move on a card to either sell or buy it, it's interesting, right? To see where it goes. So Malera, Falia, uh, what's the next order? I think the next order is just file layers. I used to do this all the time is from the period of 2013 to 2015. I would just, if a vendor had more than 10 copies of it, or let's say like close to 10 copies, I would just buy from that vendor because then I could have no shipping. Uh, in this case, I believe, I don't know why I got refund. Maybe they didn't give me copies of the near mint. I'm not positive, but during this time period, you could buy 15 to 10 copies of this card over and over again until you ran out of money. And it turned out to be probably my best speculation of all time, not percentage-wise. Percentage-wise, it has to be Underworld Connection, which went from literally six cents when I was buying hundreds of copies for six cents to $2.99, which made it very easy to trade them into a shock land I continue to do this on, you can trade it, place that into a shock land and people will be like, oh, you're giving me $10 for my $8 steam vent? Yeah, I'll do it. And that is how I build up my large collection of shock lands. Thanks to under, so it's shock, underworld connections, percentage wise, probably the best. Um, my, the, the one that I'm quite proud of is uh, the pre-order speculations. I've hit some of them pretty hard. Voice of Resurgence, I said 1250, it became 40, 50. Uh, even Elspeth, Elspeth, I said, hey, buy Elspeth. Uh, she's going to be good. And she became exactly what I expected her to become, a pro tour dominating. This is Elspeth's son's champion. And all the MTG Finance people were like, oh, Elspeth sucks, he cost six. Oh. But like one of the things that you have to know about MTG Finance people is largely they don't play Magic. So take what they say about pre-orders with a grain of salt. So after they, there's some price history, yeah, they can use statistics and data and not their knowledge to figure out the price. But if it's a brand new card and a new card is, there's never been a six mana Planeswalker that has seen considerable play. And there, let's say there's never even been a five mana Planeswalker at that time that has been dominant. They're going to say, oh, this card sucks. 
uh, and they don't actually play test it. They don't use it. I play tested Voice, Archangel, and Elspeth, and I said, "Huh, Elspeth is really good. You play her, and you pretty much have different ways to win the game." So, Falia is now a healthy thirteen dollars and fifty cents, and going up. I don't expect her to stop until a reprint. Malera is five dollars, having dropped from fifteen or eighteen recently. Her deck has fallen out of favor, which makes sense. I mean, the deck is just not what it uh, used to be. Death Shadow is the number one deck, and Death Shadow kind of beats this deck quite handily. This deck, actually, I play it, and I actually made a new deck on it. Uh, maybe I'll have the deck tech up this week, but it it's weak against, like, every other deck. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to say it. But if you run well, they cannot beat you. But if you or even a tiny bit too slow, you just lose. And you have a bad matchup against Disruption, you have a bad ma matchup against Creature Removal, and unfortunately, everything is Lightning Bolts, Inquisitions, Thought Seizes, and Fatal Pushes. So, instant speed. Instant speed removal, it's weak against, and any type of Disruption it is weak against, or Turn 1 Disruption. Anyway, that is it. That is my best speculation. Let me know in the comment section below what was your best speculation. Bye, guys.